megachurch founder and pastor Robert Morris has admitted to moral failings following accusations of sexual abuse of a child published online this past Friday. Our Andrea Lucia reports the church leaders say they were aware of what happened. So God heals, God redeems. Based in Southlake, Gateway Church is one of the country's largest megachurches. So you can't redeem yourself? With about 100,000 people attending every weekend. And nine locations spread throughout North Texas. Founder and senior pastor Robert Morris reaches even larger audiences in a weekly program posted online and broadcast in more than 190 countries. This is indeed a very complex and sensitive issue especially considering the involvement of someone in a significant leadership position within the ministry. Allegations or revelations of such serious misconduct, even if they occurred many years ago, can have profound implications for the individual involved, the church community, and the broader perception of the ministry. The allegations involve sexual abuse of a minor, which occurred 35 years ago. Pastor Morris, who was married at the time, is accused of inappropriate sexual behavior with a 12-year-old girl. The behavior reportedly included inappropriate touching and other forms of abuse over several years. The Bible sets clear standards for those in church leadership. As you mentioned, an overseer must be above reproach, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, and have a good reputation with outsiders, 1 Timothy 3 2 Feven. These qualifications are present tense, implying ongoing adherence to these standards. In a statement, church elders uh, said that Morris has been open and forthright with them about what they describe as a uh, moral failure on his part and that he, he has in the decades since, uh, quote, walked in purity. No criminal charges have ever been filed in connection to this, and it's unlikely any will be as the statute of limitations has likely run out on any that could be. Reporting live here in South Lake, Andrea Lucia, CBS News, Texas. According to the information provided, Robert Morris went through a process of confession, repentance, and restoration under the guidance of church elders. This process included stepping out of ministry and receiving professional counseling. Even if genuine repentance and transformation have occurred, the perception of the church and its leaders by both insiders and outsiders is crucial. A leader's past actions, particularly those as serious as sexual misconduct with a minor, can cast a long shadow, affecting the church's witness and the congregation's trust. And the question is, and this is an issue for them, but also for us, because we, we don't want to just look at a story, just look at it for the sake of just seeing it. We want to also apply it to us and how we ought to do things and then see what the Bible says and what's the biblical way of approaching something. So here we've got these allegations. Uh, not even an allegation, I should say, but something that happened 35 years ago. Now, what was stated, what's being told is something vile. There are a couple of things that I, I cannot, I, I just abhor. One, any person, especially a male, hurting a female. I cannot say that. Secondly, when it's a, someone hurting a child. But then when you combine the two, a male, a grown man hurting a child, a female child. Not that, not that it's, it's less when it's a male child. Um, anything sexual regarding a child, that is just abhorrent. Uh, I do not like that. I can't stand that. As a matter of fact, that's one of the things uh, that just is just aggravating. Even people in prison cannot stand that. So you think the people who have who uh, have respected or disrespected the laws of society, even they understand that's some that's a line we don't cross. And this particular pastor did so. The problem is it was 35 years ago. Now, the Bible tells us this, and I want to I want to be careful with how, with how we say this, but I want to be as godly and as biblical as possible. The Bible says, brother, if anyone is over or caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself so that you too will not come to be tempted. Now, when it talks about restoration, that means you restore someone to the actual position they were taken down from sometimes. But not always. Restoration doesn't necessarily mean that you go to the exact position because that may not be appropriate. That may, not, that may be harmful for the ministry. The question is, here we have this incident that happened 35 years ago. What do we do about it? So what I want to do is I want to just kind of read a little bit about what happened. It's essential to consider the ongoing impact on the victim. The victim's feelings and experiences should be acknowledged and addressed with compassion and care. Ensuring she receives support and justice is paramount. Continued transparency and accountability are vital. 
If the church decides to keep the pastor in his role, they must ensure stringent accountability measures are in place to maintain trust and integrity. The church leadership should prayerfully and carefully reevaluate whether it is appropriate for Robert Morris to continue in his current role. This consideration should take into account the biblical qualifications for leadership and the potential impact on the church's mission and reputation. Providing continued support for the victim, ensuring her voice is heard and her needs are met, is crucial. This could include counseling, spiritual support, and any other resources she may require. Maintaining transparency with the congregation about the situation, the steps taken, and the reasons behind any decisions made is essential for building and maintaining trust. The church should focus on healing and reconciliation for all involved, including the congregation. This might involve special services, counseling, and open forums for discussion and healing. Ultimately, seeking God's guidance through prayer and discernment is vital. The leadership and congregation should come together to seek the Lord's wisdom and direction in handling this sensitive matter. And here's a bigger issue. Does that cause a problem with us looking at the name of God, specifically the outsiders? How will they view that? Will, they, will that be an issue? Will they um, be upset? Will it bother? Will it upset the people and or will it cause them to despise the Lord's offering? Not like it was in the, in the old covenant, but in terms of the church service, in terms of the Lord, the reading of his word, because this is a man of God that represents that and he's there. Does that have a problem? And it might. The issue with that church is that does this become a stumbling block for the people, the outsiders and the insiders? Because you want the outsiders to, face, to place their faith in Christ. Are they going to look at this man and then that be uh, an impediment? for them to do so because they can't get past looking at this person with these allegations. This might be an issue where you have repented of your sins, you've been placed in ministry, you have developed something, but now you have to step away for the benefit of the ministry, for the sake of the name of the Lord, so that his name will not be defiled or profaned because of what you did and the consequences. We don't get to control the consequences. And so it might be that, you know what, you are forfeited forever. Now, the other point is for us there's going to also be a knee-jerk reaction that he's got to go. Um, in other words, and which is fine, but we don't want to be the ones that are out for our out for a pound of flesh either. So make sure that you view this in regards uh, to the scriptures as godly as possible. As Paul says in Galatians 6, considering yourself as well, this is one of those situations where, eh, you know what, I think it might be best that you do step back because it's going to be hard. Now, how, how are you going to look at Robert Morris going forward and not think of this. If if this were more known, more details, possibly, but even still, even still, no matter what you had known, there are just some things that you can't get past or some things that it's going to be rightly or wrongly, someone can say, but it's going to be hard to get past this issue. How do you ever look at Robert Morris, whether you're a believer or non-believer, and not have this issue in the back of your head? How does it not it's like sitting in church service with someone who, who, who you can't stand and can't stand you. Uh, it's hard to focus on what's happening, the word of God, because you're so focused on this other thing. This thing is an issue. And so I think it needs to be dealt with. Now, for us, be careful, guys, that we don't determine what the consequences are. For me personally, I think he should be removed. I think for the good of the ministry, he should step back. I think he should do something else for the good of the ministry, for the sake of Christ, if it's bigger than him, which he would say. And so that's one of those things that you just have to let go. Will they? I don't know. If they don't, here's what I will not do. What I will not do, if they don't sit him down, I'm not going to be one of the ones out protesting and say he's got to go. Uh, I pray that in spite of this, that the Lord gets glory. I pray in, in spite of this, that people come to Christ. Uh, my preference is that he should be set down. Addressing allegations of past misconduct in a manner that honors God, supports the victim, and maintains the integrity of the ministry is challenging, but necessary. The focus should be on upholding biblical principles, ensuring justice and compassion for the victim, and maintaining the church's witness to the broader community.